My long-term boyfriend, 27-year-old male and I, 26-year-old female, seem to have a recurring issue in our relationship, the topic of children. My boyfriend is the type of guy who would make a great dad. He was brought up by a single mother, never had a father figure in his life, and dreams of the stereotypical family, two loving parents and a child. He even has a tattoo with an image representing this idea. He is gentle, compassionate, patient, a good human being who is kind to everyone. I sometimes wonder how it is possible that such a pure soul exists. If there is one thing I dislike about him, it would be that he can be too naive, caring about others' opinions, and trying to fit every societal standard. We live in an Eastern European country, so people are not as liberal. Men and women have to fit their stereotypical gender roles. So sometimes he suddenly has all these ideas given to him by others and wants to pursue them because someone said it is what people do. For context, I was brought up in a family of two people who decided that they would make up for their relationship problems by having me. In other words, people who detest each other and are together because of me. My home has always been a battlefield, never a safe space for me to open up. I have never experienced healthy family dynamics due to a bipolar mother who is mentally and physically hurtful to my dad and mentally hurtful to me and my grandmother. My father, on the other hand, has a daughter from his first marriage and I have always been compared to her. He has always looked at me with disgust and has said that he does not see me as his daughter. Last year, I started psychotherapy because of the numerous issues I have nowadays associated with them. My boyfriend knows that I have never been a particular fan of kids. He sees kids as little cute babies. I see them as humans who require parenting, which would be a burden to the life I want us to have and as a huge responsibility. This leads me to the idea that I am not fit to be a mother. I am highly conscious of the possibility that I pass on to my child my traumatic experiences with my parents because it is not possible to fix every single thing while seeing a psychologist. I know the degree to which some outbursts of anger by my mother have influenced me, and I would never want to cause this to another human being. Coincidence or not, the husbands of all my girlfriends decided to participate in the parenting of their kids for around two hours a week after they were born, so I am aware of all the mental load my girlfriends deal with. I know how they looked before having kids and how they look now, and don't want this for myself. As a comparison, my boyfriend's idea of having kids is shaped by his guy friends. They don't participate in their upbringing and see said kids as occasional entertainment that requires zero effort so it is super cool. Also, thanks to my PCOS, pregnancy issues and complications are a real fear of mine. Getting to this point, so conceiving, will be challenging, according to my gynecologist. I don't have the money and the desire for huge investments in order to have a child. My boyfriend has known about all of this for years now. After an initial phase of, you will change your mind, and me insisting on knowing whether he'd still like to pursue a romantic relationship with me, knowing that there's almost no likelihood for this to happen, he changed his mind. He said that I was right that a family does not require a baby, but his hope and desire that I'd change my mind transpired on a few occasions, which means he had changed his mind just to make me feel okay. The other day, he made a remark about me going to be a good mother, he said that people who prefer careers over kids end up dying alone, and this is very scary. I said that if your main reason to have a kid is to serve your own interests and make sure that you do not die alone, this is even scarier. I added that everyone dies alone, and if his argument were on point, there would have been no elderly people who are never visited by their grandkids. He believes I am brainwashed by my girlfriends, and it seems like I am choosing to be surrounded only by women who made poor decisions choosing husbands. So it's women's fault. This opened another huge debate, whereas I explained that in most instances, the guy was fantastic up to the birth of the kid, and no matter how many promises he gave, no one could have expected him to change in such a way postpartum. He still believed that it was not possible for a man to suddenly change after this miracle called birth. My boyfriend also believes that bringing up a kid is not difficult because we can leave the kid with my boyfriend's mother. 
Leaving our future kid with my parents is out of the question for me. But in his view, we have three people who would step in and help. In our country, the pensions are laughable, so the elderly have to work until they die. In my view, it is not okay to expect family members to leave their jobs just to babysit your kid for free. In the meantime, very few kids make it to state-funded daycare. And private daycare is really not something I'm looking forward to spending 80% of my salary on. I suggested that we both educate each other more on the topic of what it actually means to give birth and the changes it does to women's bodies. I suggested that we watch educational videos and started explaining the birthing process to him, to which he looked in disgust and said there was no need for that many details. I asked what the issue was, as I was just explaining what was behind the so-called miracle. He doesn't want to know, but he wants to be a parent. He refuses to understand my other argument that has to do with my physique. I worked very hard for the body I have, and he believes the photos I showed him of Belly's postpartum are not what all women experience, and this happens only if a woman doesn't work out prior to birth, which is not my case. He gave an example of some local models who were back in shape in three months tops. I explained that they have a bunch of people who work for them, such as private chefs and nannies, so it's impossible for the average woman to have all these things. My boyfriend is an amazing person. It's not something I say after knowing him for four months, but for eight years. But I don't know if our differences in regard to this very topic are a deal breaker. His responses are a sign for me that while he is an amazing soul, he cannot comprehend what having a child really means. It is a societal expectation he wants to fulfill so that his mother and friends are happy, but he feels so strongly about it and our debates are not fruitful. And it sounds absurd, but I feel like the only reason I'd like to have a kid now is to prove to him that he cannot handle it and he was wrong for everything. Being brought up in the family I already described this is the last thing I'd like to do to a child, to bring them into this world unwanted so that I prove a point. Am I seriously as brainwashed as he says? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. If he thinks you are so weak-minded that you can be brainwashed, why is he still with you? Since he can't control you, you must be under the control of someone else, incapable of independent thought. You aren't compatible. He needs to go find someone who wants kids, not someone he thinks he needs to manipulate, or in his mind, deprogram into wanting kids. There are so many posts on Reddit where I think, OMG, why did you have kids with this guy? They post a boatload of red flags from the start and then say they are expecting. At least you haven't yet tied yourself to an unsuitable partner. Maybe you will change your mind, but it's better to be with someone who respects your decision now rather than someone who thinks so little of your decision-making capabilities. Comment 2. As kindly as possible, you two need to break up and find partners who want the same thing as you, or be single and live your life that way. The person having to grow, carry, birth, and, by the sounds of his naive view on parenting, do the majority of caring for the child, being the one who doesn't want a kid in the first place, will lead to disaster. For you, your relationship, and the kid that now has to grow up in said disaster. You don't want a child. He doesn't think he has to do much parenting and doesn't even want to hear about the less rosy parts of the process. Bringing a child into that would be mean. You two want two different things on a subject where you can't meet in the middle. You either have a kid or you don't. There is no middle ground. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a month since I shared my story, and a lot has happened. I never expected things to unfold the way they did, but here we are. After our last big argument, my boyfriend and I decided to take a break from the topic of children. We both needed some space to think. But, as fate would have it, life had other plans. My boyfriend's mother fell ill, and he had to step up to take care of her. It was a role reversal that he wasn't prepared for, and it opened his eyes to the realities of caring for someone else full time. During this time, I was there for him, but I also kept my distance to give him space to process everything. I watched as the man who dreamed of a perfect family struggled with the responsibilities that came with caring for his sick mother. It was tough on him, 
and I could see the stress wearing him down. Meanwhile, I was dealing with my own family drama. My bipolar mother had another episode, and I had to intervene to help my dad. It was draining, and it reminded me why I was so hesitant to bring a child into this world. The thought of my child potentially going through what I did was unbearable. One evening, my boyfriend came over looking exhausted. He broke down and admitted that he had been naive about what it truly meant to care for someone. He had always seen himself as the fun dad who would play with his kids, but now he understood that there was so much more to it. It was a jaw-dropping moment for both of us. We started to have more honest conversations about our future. He confessed that he had been holding on to the idea of a child because he thought it would fix the void left by his absent father. He had always wanted to be the dad he never had, but now he realized that he might not be ready for that. I shared my fears with him too. I told him about the nights I spent listening to my parents argue and how it made me question whether I could ever be a good mother. I was afraid of repeating the cycle of dysfunction that I grew up in. As we opened up to each other, we grew closer. We started to understand each other's perspectives more, and it felt like we were finally on the same page. But the question of whether to have children still loomed over us. Then, the unexpected happened. One of my closest friends, who had always been the picture of a perfect mother, confided in me that she was struggling. Her husband, who had seemed so involved during the pregnancy, had become distant and unhelpful. She was overwhelmed and exhausted and it was a wake-up call for both of us. My boyfriend saw the toll it took on her and realized that his friend's portrayals of fatherhood were not the whole truth. He started to question whether he had been influenced by their stories and whether he was ready for the reality of parenting. We decided to seek couples therapy to work through our issues. It was a turning point for us. We learned to communicate better and to understand each other's fears and desires. It wasn't easy but it was necessary. As we worked through our problems, we both made compromises. My boyfriend agreed to let go of the pressure to have children and to focus on our relationship. I agreed to keep an open mind and not shut down the possibility completely. But life had one more surprise in store for us. My gynecologist called with unexpected news. Despite my PCOS, I was pregnant. It was a shock to both of us, and it forced us to confront our feelings head on. After many long discussions, we made the difficult decision to not go through with the pregnancy. It was a heartbreaking choice, but we knew it was the right one for us at this time. We were not ready, emotionally or mentally, to bring a child into our complicated lives. Mill was so nice until I got sick and lost my job, but then she tells everyone my job interviews at a family dinner. Oh boy. I get my revenge. My husband and I have been together for almost nine years and married for almost five. When we first started dating, I adored my husband's mom. She was incredibly easy to get along with and talk to. She drove an hour in the wee early hours of the morning to stay with me in the ER. I had a severe migraine and was waiting to be admitted to the hospital. She helped my husband buy me two new tires for my car when I was struggling and I even asked her to come with me to select my wedding dress. I always felt so happy and blessed that I had such a great relationship with her because I love reading mother-in-law horror stories as much as the next Reddit lurker. I also want to mention that my husband is not a mama's boy. They talk a few times a month, maybe once a week at most. 2022 was a rough year for us. I had to quit my job due to never-ending debilitating migraines and my amazing husband covered our bills and expenses during that time. That August, I had a total hysterectomy due to my hormones being the cause of them. Good news, I haven't had a migraine since. When I got the okay to start working, I had a fairly tumultuous journey trying to get a job again. I work in a pretty specific field in healthcare that limits the jobs I can be hired for. And unfortunately, by then, I developed a bit of a reputation due to my prior health issues, which also hindered my search. Every time I interviewed and didn't get the job, it was like a painful knife to the gut, and I sank into a pretty bad depression. My mother-in-law said a few things that bothered me during this time, but I chalked it up to her trying to be supportive without knowing how much it hurt me. She said, keep it up, girl. 
Think of what a great Christmas gift it would be for you and husband's name if you could get a job. And later, I was hoping for a Christmas miracle. By this point, I'd been told by more than one company and facility during interviews that they'd call me when they made a decision on hiring me. And I didn't want to start the process of applying at minimum wage places and then have to deal with quitting quickly or stopping the hiring process due to getting a job within my actual career. But the thing that hurt the most was when my husband was on the phone with her and he had her on speakerphone. This was a common occurrence due to my close relationship with her as well. She mentioned my job search, and when he told her it was still ongoing, she said, why can't she just go out and work at a fast food place? My husband shut it down immediately because he knew how hard I was trying to get a job that pays around the average amount professionals in my career field make. I have my bachelor's degree in this. I didn't go to college for nothing. I adore my career and I'm proud of my profession. It just made it seem like she thought I wasn't putting any effort into getting a job and I was going to just leech off of my husband for the rest of our lives. If roles were reversed, I'd do exactly what he was doing at that time. I'd take over expenses until he could start working again as well. But I already felt like I didn't deserve my husband. And now I feel like she thinks the same, that I'm a burden to him and he's better off without me. First of all, was this an overreaction on my part? Was I being overly sensitive? How do I move past this so it won't poison every interaction I have with her? The holidays were tough last year because seeing her caused me anxiety and I felt completely withdrawn from her. P.S. I'm happy to say that I'm working full-time again and I love my job and I'm incredibly happy. My husband and I are still happily married. ETA I started my job search in October 2022 and started my new job in February 2023. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I think she was unkind, but I also think you're projecting a bit. Nowhere in what she said was there even a hint of not being good enough for her son. She was frustrated by something that wasn't really her business to be frustrated about, but I also don't get the sense she was trying to insult you. And honestly, You'll hear that sort of thing a lot, that an adult who's able to work should get any job while they look for a niche job. It's not advice that applies in every circumstance, but it is pretty common. That being said, congratulations. Thrilled you're working in your field and boo to anyone who was holding your previous medical issues against you. You're a star for getting through it all. Comment two. I think this is actually a pretty reasonable take. The fact of the matter is, only having one income for over a year is a huge deal. She was probably concerned you would never go back to work. Personally, I would have happily taken a minimum wage job so that I could contribute to my household instead of pouting and waiting for a job in my field. Sometimes being an adult does mean doing things we don't want to do, especially if your reputation has been damaged in your previous field. That will be hard to manage. Now for the update. Hey Reddit fam, Buckle up because the past week has been a roller coaster in Aftweer. Remember how I was struggling with the job hunt and my mother in law's comments? Well, things took a turn for the dramatic. So last week, I was settling into my new job, feeling the relief of finally being employed in my field again. My husband and I were slowly getting back on track, and I was starting to feel like my old self. But then, out of nowhere, my mother in law drops a shocker during a family dinner that we were hosting. She announced in front of everyone that she had been talking to a friend who works at one of the places I had interviewed at. Apparently, this friend told her that they didn't hire me because they were worried about my health issues and the possibility of me missing work. I was floored. Not only was this a huge violation of my privacy, but it was also illegal for the company to share that information. I felt betrayed and humiliated. My husband was furious and the tension at the dinner table was thick enough to cut with a knife. He confronted his mom right there, asking her why she would share something so personal and hurtful in front of everyone. She tried to brush it off, saying she thought it would be helpful for me to know why I wasn't getting hired. But here's the kicker, Reddit. My mother-in-law has always had this habit of helping in ways that end up causing more harm than good. Like the time when my husband and I were first dating 
and she tried to set him up with her friend's daughter because she thought I wasn't serious enough for him. Or when she accidentally spilled red wine on my favorite white blouse during a family gathering because she thought it was too revealing. The rest of the evening was a blur of awkward apologies and hasty goodbyes. After everyone left, my husband and I had a long talk. He reassured me that he was on my side and that we would handle this together. We decided that we needed to set some boundaries with his mom. The next day, my husband called his mom and laid down the law. He told her that her behavior was unacceptable and that if she couldn't respect our privacy, she would be seeing a lot less of us. She tried to play the victim, saying she was just trying to be helpful and didn't understand why we were so upset. But here's the thing, Reddit. This isn't the first time she's crossed the line. When we were planning our wedding, she tried to take over everything, from the guest list to the menu, because she thought she knew better. It took a lot of firm conversations to get her to back off. And now with this latest incident, it feels like all the progress we made with her has been undone. It's like she can't help but meddle in our lives, even when it's clear she's not helping. So we're taking a break from her for a while. It's going to be tough, especially with family events coming up, but we need to protect our peace. My husband has been amazing through all of this, and I'm so grateful for his support. In the meantime, I'm focusing on my new job and trying to move past the hurt. It's not easy, but I'm determined to not let this setback define me. My husband and I are stronger than ever, and we're not going to let anyone, not even his mom, come between us. Boyfriend says I take advantage of him because I have savings and a good job, but now he wants me to pay a portion of his rent if I spend consecutive days at his place. Oh boy, I'm scared and sad about the direction of our relationship. My boyfriend is expressing that he feels taken advantage of because he thought the relationship was a partnership and that I should help him with certain things because he's struggling financially. I have details in my other post. But basically, he has debt from a previous marriage and other bad financial decisions he made when he was younger, plus student loans. He works at an IT help desk job right now after graduating from computer science last year and entering a really bad job market. He lives in subsidized housing, and I admit all of our hangouts are at his house. I have good savings, an excellent credit score, and a stable job. I'm doing all right for someone my age, I think. Anyways, there was a stretch of time where I worked remotely from his house on his insistence of us spending more time together. I always paid for our groceries either 100% at the start, then 50% later on. He has not been keeping track properly since June 2023, so yesterday he demanded I pay him back. Well, I also paid $5,000 for a vacation that cost $6,000, so after we talked about that, he said, Okay, from today, we are even. Now today he is saying that the relationship must change and he doesn't see it going back to the way it is. That if I intend to stay at his house, part-time living there, then I need to pay a portion of his rent. To clarify, even when I worked from his home, I never slept over. I was just there a lot. I only very recently have slept over on weekends or Thursday through Sundays in the last two months maybe. He says that he pays rent for his space and since I am taking up space that I need to pull my weight and pay, this seems kind of weird to me but I don't know if I am being unreasonable. It doesn't seem normal to pay someone's rent when we don't officially live together. He says that it doesn't matter what it is legally but that I should pay if I spend consecutive days at his apartment. That if I want to be treated like a girlfriend slash guest, I can only seldom stay over. And if it's more than that, arbitrarily going to be set by him probably, then I am a roommate and I should pay. He also said that from now on I need to pay half of his gas money. We usually use his car to pick and drop me off. And I don't know, even with my friends we don't pay each other gas money because, well, we find that a bit cheap. Unless it is a super long distance. When my boyfriend and I go for super long distances, we always use my car for reference because it's newer. Mine is a 2013, his is a 1997. He then also said that I must pay 50-50 of all dates from now on. Or if he pays 100% of the dates, then that means we will be going on dates significantly less. 
This is really sad to me because we haven't been on dates in five months, which has been one of my complaints about how we don't spend quality time together and that he doesn't do the emotional labor of planning a date for us every now and then. Also, to me, having to go 50-50 on a date feels really bad. But maybe I am unreasonable and I should pay half? I don't know, but it seems like he doesn't even care that the date aspect is really important to me, especially after being deprived of it for so long. By the way, we didn't go on dates because he never thought about planning them, and we grew complacent. I guess. He also said all of this stuff in a really shitty tone to me, repeatedly implied that this is final, and he won't go back to the way things were because he feels taken advantage of and feels like a fool for thinking we were a partnership. He also said some other nasty things to me too. I'm very torn because maybe I have unrealistic standards and he's right that I should pay, but even logically to me, it seems wrong to pay his rent and dates. Gas, I can maybe see, and I already do for groceries slash other mutual purchases. Please help me. I really love him. I'm not sure what's happening to us, and I feel really scared and sad. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I am a guy, and I can tell you that your boyfriend is a loser. First of all, if you want to make your dating life easy, you should always date to get married. You should ask yourself, if you marry him tomorrow, how will it benefit you? You will have to pay half of his bills that you did not benefit from, and you will get resentful over time. If you walk away now, he will have to pay the bill by himself. Wake up. Comment 2. You literally just posted about this in multiple subreddits, including this one, less than a day ago, and obviously refused to take the combined 150 plus comments worth of advice telling you to leave his butt. It's hard to feel sympathy for you when you're so deep in your stubbornness that you refuse to listen. Good luck. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all. I thought things were going to get better, but they've taken a turn for the worse. Remember how my boyfriend was struggling financially and how he felt taken advantage of? Well, things escalated quickly. He's been getting more and more insistent that I contribute financially to our relationship even though we don't officially live together. It's been a rough week to say the least. So I've been spending more time at his place, right? And I've been trying to be understanding of his situation. He's got debt from his previous marriage and some bad financial decisions, plus student loans. It's a lot, but now he's demanding that I pay part of his rent if I'm gonna be staying over so much. It's weird because I've never even slept over except on weekends recently. I've been paying for our groceries, and I even covered most of the cost for our vacation. But now he's saying that we're even, and moving forward, I need to pay half of everything. It's like he's keeping a tally of every penny, and it's really starting to get to me. We had a big argument about it yesterday, but he said that if I'm at his apartment for consecutive days, I'm not just a girlfriend or guest anymore. I'm a roommate and should pay up. It's like he's forgotten all the times I've helped him out without expecting anything in return. And the gas money thing? We usually use his car for short trips, and I've never asked him for gas money when we use my car for longer drives. But now he wants me to start paying half for gas whenever we go anywhere in his car. It's like he's nickel and diming me, and it doesn't feel right. The worst part is the dates. We haven't been on a proper date in months, and it's something I've really missed. But now he's saying that if we do go on dates, I have to pay half, or we just won't go out as much. It's like he doesn't care about spending quality time together anymore. He's been really cold about it all, too. He keeps saying that this is how it's going to be from now on, and that he won't go back to how things were. He even said some really hurtful things during our argument. It's like he's a completely different person. I'm heartbroken. I love him, but I feel like I'm losing him to his financial stress. It's like he's pushing me away instead of letting me help him. I don't know if I'm being unreasonable or if he's being unfair. I'm just really scared and sad about where our relationship is heading. I've been trying to make sense of it all, thinking back to when we first met and how different things were. We used to have so much fun together and money was never an issue. But now it's like it's all he can think about. 
I remember how he used to surprise me with little gifts or plan a special evening for us. It's hard to believe that's the same person who's now telling me I need to pay for half of everything, even though I've been supporting him all this time. I'm not sure what to do. I want to be there for him, but I also need to take care of myself. It's like he's forgotten all the times I've been there for him, all the sacrifices I've made, and now he's just focused on what he thinks I owe him. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.